So welcome back to another episode of short tutorials on the Learn It channel. Today we are going to be doing a follow-up tutorial on the last lesson, which talked about the an introduction to manufacturing models. If you haven't watched that tutorial yet, here's the link. Please click it now. You need to understand the basics of manufacturing models, what they can do for you, what how they can help your setups before you uh, proceed with this tutorial. So if you've already done that and you're ready to proceed, well, let's dive into it. So we're going to be creating a simple roughing and finishing operation just for this face. And again, with the manufacturing model, we can remove certain features by retaining or keeping the original model without editing it. So let's do that. Let's go back into the manufacturer workspace. We have created our manufacturer model already. There it is on the screen. We can hide it, show our original, show the manufacturing model. So we're going to be basing our toolpaths on this. And again, we're creating this toolpath because we don't want, uh, we want it to have nice smooth motions back and forth on our machine with no interruptions, not going into any cavities or anything like that. We just want a simple toolpath. So let's do that. Let's create a new setup. We are going to uh, just go into our stock, get rid of our additional stock. Now our work coordinate system uh, if this was me manufacturing this part, I would probably be putting it in a vise, uh, clamping on the right face, which is right here, and the left face is over here. So let's do that. Let's uh, let's go to our model orientation, select the z-axis. We can pick anything that's z. You can see our z is upside down. We can double click there or click here. It's the exact same thing. There we go. Our x-axis, our x-axis is not correct. We want it to be in line with this line. There we go. It's facing the wrong direction again. We can click there. Everything is in the right orientation, but where would my G54 be? Well, I would probably put it on the top of my part or probably the bottom, depending on the setup. Let's just go up here. There we go. We've got our work coordinate system figured out. Now let's create a simple rough tool path. We're going to use adaptive clearing. I've already inputted a couple tools here. We've got our one half inch flat end mill. We're not going to be worrying about speeds and feeds because that is most often uh, machine specific. Let's go into our geometry. Well, what, what are our stock contours? Well, let's pick face contours. We're going to pick our face here and look at it creates a projected contour all the way around that face. That's what we want. Now we're going to go to heights. What is our bottom height? All of our clearance, our retract, our top are good, but our bottom height is going to be this line right there. We don't want it to go past that. Now our passes. Uh, again, this is going to be specific to your machining techniques. Um, I personally like high removal rates you know, short step overs, full length of our cutters. So let's do that. Let's go to um, maximum rough step down. We're going to go one inch. Our fine step down defaults to one tenth. Uh, let's leave flat area detection on just to see, just to show you that uh, an air develops. So let's just go there. So you can see this is not an optimal tool path at all. It's got a bunch of uh, fine step overs here it would be a waste of time we don't like that it's also got some miscellaneous steps over there let's go back to it let's just get rid of flat area detection because as you see with flat area detection it brings up a minimal step down and there's a formula there let's just get rid of that okay now let's see oh this is much better look at our nice even steps over here we're not going to be worrying about lead-ins and lead-outs at this time so we've got a beautiful tool path there that wraps it all out. Again, this is too aggressive for me, but let's go back to our passes and I'm going to change the fine step down to something like, well, let's go 50 thou. There we go. So excellent. We've just finished our rough tool pass, but now we want to do our finishing tool path. So, I can't stress this enough with Fusion 360. As we 
hover over each of the tool paths here. Look at the first sentence. It might be in the second sentence, but the first sentence here says a roughing strategy. Next one, steep and shallow creates a finishing operation. Uh, let's go over to scallop. There, it doesn't say it specifically. No, contour creates a finishing or semi-finishing operation, right? So I can't stress this enough. If you're trying to use, um, say, a finishing operation in order to rough apart, you're going to run into a lot of problems. Uh, but in this instance, we want to use parallel, which is a widely used finishing strategy. Let's go there. We're going to select our ball node or our, our ball end mill. Our geometry. Again, what do we want? Do we want a silhouette of the entire part? No, we only want a silhouette of this surface. So let's go selection. We can pick face contours there as well and go OK. Let's move over here. Our, it doesn't really matter in this instance. It won't fall off the edge. So let's just leave our model bottom there. Now, here we go, passes. We can uh, create a pass direction reference. So uh, usually, I wouldn't even say usually, some machinists, some programmers would prefer to have the tool go up and down, all the way down our part. Some would like it to go left and right. Uh, there might even be specifications in your drawings and in uh, which direction it should be or maybe you're looking for a certain look um, but in this instance let's just go down our y axis there we go our step over let's not do a let's do an, an aggressive step over just for um, processing time there we go okay let's go okay so here we have a problem we've got a couple problems actually you can see that our tool will start right on the top of our part and uh, it might create some, well, it might create some damage to that, to that edge. But worse yet, if we look down on this side of our part, it's not even finishing. And we can see that if we go into our simulation, let's just hit our play button. There we go. So again, I'm just showing this as a tutorial. This is not exactly how I would finish this part. But here we go. Let's take show points, links, cutting moves. There we go. So you can see as we get to the bottom, because I have colorization on as comparison, we see that there is stock left over at the end. So that's not good. We want to fix that. We want to address that. And uh, this might be confusing or upsetting for some new Fusion users, but this is doing exactly what we have asked Fusion to do. So let's just prove it to you. I'm going to edit that tool path. Oh, sorry. I'm going to simulate that tool path. There we go. We'll select all tool path. And I'm just going to select a point right there. And now look at if we click on the back face, the center of our tool will not go past our boundary that we created. It is directly on center. So clearly that's an issue. We don't want to go directly on center. We want the tool to go past our part so that the tangent point where the tool meets the surface will still be engaged. It will be able to finish that entire part. So how do we do that? Well, let's go to our tool path again. And we're going to go to geometry and look at here. Contact point boundary. Now you can see that there are two different selections. We can disable or we can enable it. And you can say that disabled, the center point determines the end of the cut. But we want enabled, the contact point determines the end of the cut. And then you can even see the bottom uh, message there can be used to restrict roll over on the top edge of a cut. The difference is illustrated below on a parallel tool path. So when we disable it, it will roll over on the top of our part, potentially damaging it. Uh, but enabled, it will just go to the tangent point. So let's enable that 
Let's go OK. Great, now look at what we have. So our tool is starting right at the top there, the tangent point. If we go again to our uh, simulation, and we're going to hit the play button. There we go. So as we get to the bottom, let me just click on our back face here. As we get to the bottom of our part, uh, it goes past our boundary so that it finishes that edge. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so that's exactly what we want. Now, if this was me, I would not start in this direction from top to bottom. It would it would plunge into our steps there and probably damage the part as well. So I would probably in this instance prefer to go back and forth and work my way up the part. So how do we do that? Let's go to passes. Now our pass direction reference we can change. There we go. Let's just select that. Now look at the direction of our tool. So it will walk up the tool path, the, the face there and finish our face in a beautiful way. Perfect. Okay. Very, very nice. So I hope that you've learned something here. If you have, I would appreciate you liking and subscribing. Please make a comment if you have a specific application where something is not working so well. Um, let me hear about it. Please write your comments, your concerns. If you appreciated it, if it helped you, please let me know. Until the next lesson, thank you so much for joining uh, the Learn It channel. Please see the description below for uh, timeline references. Thank you again for joining. Hope to see you at the next lesson.